you can put to rest once and for all a controversy which has racked our community and wreaked havoc in our city and across our country. It happened first in Washington, but you can stop it. Here, in Cincinnati, before it happens again. Who knows where? New York? In Middleton? Everywhere? And isn't it amazing that in the year the Berlin Wall came down to celebrate freedom, some people tried to build a wall down Fifth Street in Cincinnati to take away that freedom. We're a museum, they say. Are they putting themselves above the law? Are they saying they're better than us? You, as the jury, have the right to tell them what it is. Is it art? Hmm? You tell them. You tell them what it is. I don't know where I stand on whether the work is, is obscene or not. You know, I, I hate the pictures, but I've also reviewed Miller versus California. Do I think that Robert Maplethorpe is suitable to hang in my home? No. Do I approve of his lifestyle? No. I most certainly do not. Do he and his pictures worry and disturb me? Yes. Now, if artists want to go in a men's room and, 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 and write dirty words on the wall, let them furnish their own crayons. Let them furnish their own wall, but don't ask the taxpayers to support it. Would you take this home hanging over your couch? What a disgrace. Is it art? You tell them what it is. I don't know if it's art. Guys pissing on guys, I, I don't see that every day. It's tough, but we don't want censorship, but we don't want just plain sacrilegious junk being peddled as art. And I'll spare the American people the one vivid offensive example that comes to my mind. And it is so bad that I don't even want to tell you what it is. I think most of you know what it is. It's a national issue. It concerns all of us. But I always knew if they were going to run into trouble, it'd be right here in Cincinnati. in here. Ah! Oh, partner. What's wrong with you You know, guys? we have 15 minutes. Yeah. Kneecap. Ah! Hey, by the way, how about your mom? Is she beautiful or what? Come on. She's gorgeous. It's huh? my Republican politician wife look. I got to tell you. Listen to mommy. I want you to know whatever happens today, everything's going to be OK. It's all going to be over? Everything's going to go back the way it was? Well, everybody's a little nervous today. But you know what I want you to do? Your clothes are all laid out on your bed, and I want you to chop, chop, and run, 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 go get dressed, OK? Y'all hurry, oh. hurry, hurry. Come on, let's go. Ow. Come on. Go get him. <laughs> you know, I just want you to know, whatever happens, I'm only talking to you to tell you I'm not talking to you. Write what you want. Because in the end, the only thing that matters is the verdict. The jury will speak for the people. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will hear your verdict read as the order of the court to be recorded. 
City of Cincinnati, State of Ohio versus Contemporary Art Center, case number 90CRB11699-716. 716, if Phil Collins may get his wish, maybe a thunderstorm later today when I'm <laughs> 68. Coming up at 720, Pam will have some more news. What's hot today? Maplethorpe. No! More Maplethorpe! No, Maple no, no, Maple no, not no, again! Sorry, guys. I guess today's the day we find out if those pictures are really obscene or not. <laughs> Or whether it was just because Cy Lee's woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Huh? The First Amendment gave us freedom of speech. So what you're saying, it didn't include me? I like to party and have a good time. There's nothing but pleasure written in our rhymes. I know you don't think we'll ever quit. We got some people on our side that won't take your lip. We're going to do all the things we want to do. You can't stand to see a brother get as rich as you. This is the 90s and we're coming on strong, saying things and doing things that you're saying is wrong. Wising up, because on election day, we'll see who's banned in the USA. Ladies and gentlemen, could you take your seats, uh, please, for a moment. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I've just received some very bad news. Is anyone here scheduled to show Robert Mablethorpe the perfect moment? John. Oh, hello, Dennis. This is Dennis Berry, Contemporary Arts Center, Cincinnati. The Corcoran Gallery in Washington has canceled the perfect moment, Robert Mablethorpe's show. Why did they do that, the Corcoran? God only knows. Sorry? The mysteries of Washington politics. <laughs> we hope you'll stand firm. The Corcoran has taken us and put us on a very slippery slope. I implore you, Dennis, don't let him push you down the mountain. You're here. They don't have to answer to my board of directors. Oh, Dennis, the board loves you, and this is going to put him in the major leagues. Isn't that what you always wanted? Move in the way, get out the way. You know, you envy the Getty and the Metropolitan. Stop complaining. Show the Corcoran what you can do in Cincinnati. Are the pictures that bad? Oh, I can't believe that. <gasps> oh, my God. Whatever Mr. Maplethorpe wanted to do with that particular bullwhip was his own business. <laughs> but the idea that I should be subsidizing that with my tax dollars is absurd, number one. Number two, once they got out to Cincinnati, you ask who decides. You decide. But Judge Albany said before we do anything that we should elect a four-person. Well, teacher, what about you? Oh, I don't know. I think uh, college man over there should do it. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Uh, thanks anyway. If nobody but... else wants to, I'd be willing. Um, well, maybe we could take a vote of hands. Um... If you say so, teacher. Why do you keep... I, I'm not a teacher. Why do you keep calling She's me... She's a fashion expert, remember? Oh. Excuse me. I'm not an expert. I'm just a fashion buyer for a discount chain. Good, because we've heard from enough experts. Well, nobody's saying part. that they're an expert. I didn't say that. All right. Relax, okay? I mean, this guy fixes washing machines, and I sell air conditioners. 
That's all I'm saying. Fine, so no one's So I vote for you. Me okay. too. Ah, uh, okay. Fine, okay, fine. I'm the four person. Well, I guess the first question we have to ask is, is this obscene or is it art? Back in June, I told the Association of Art Museum Directors that Cincinnati could handle a Maplethorpe show. And who is Robert Maplethorpe? Was a preeminent photographer. He had a huge retrospective at the Whitney last year, just a month before he passed away of AIDS. And there was a period of time back in the 70s when he depicted certain sex practices of the gay community. A few members of Congress had that same reaction, guys, <laughs> which is why the Corcoran canceled his show amidst the protests we see here, rather violent on both sides of the issue, I might add. Those uh, sex pictures, are they part of the show? Well, they're not sex pictures, as in pornography, Wayne. They were meant to reveal what he regarded as beautiful in scenes that ordinarily would be sorted shocking. <clears throat> and let's face it, some people will not like these images. We'll try to let them know what's here, so if they want to, they can steer clear. We'll make sure that no one under 18 is included. Uh, you know, check IDs at the door. Sounds like the Corcoran wasn't so off base. I'm very proud of this museum. I put us up against practically any contemporary art museum in this country. And I have achieved that because of the support of each and every person in this room. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with this. Well, don't you think you should have consulted with the board before putting the museum at risk? We do have a contract. No world-class museum director is going to accept micromanagement, second-guessing every decision. We either support Dennis, or if we don't like what he's doing, well, fire him. <laughs> <laughs> this here was mailed to me from some friends in Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm going to hand it around to y'all. But if you're weak-kneed, queasy, you might want to give it a pass. Some of you might feel the true evil of these pictures is their exaltation of lewd homosexual barbarities or their attempt to legitimize the homosexual lifestyle by presenting it as art. We're going to approach it from a strictly legal standpoint. What we want to do, bottom line, we want to encourage our elected officials to enforce the laws already on the books that say this stuff is obscene and that showing it is a crime. It's very pretty. Sheriff, there have been some complaints. Really? What about? Well, that's what our story is going to be about. Would you care to make a statement? No. No, that'd be fine. Bill? <clears throat> <clears throat> Sheriff Lease, so as far as you're concerned, there's no problem with the photographs? No. No, I don't see a problem with the photographs of Robert Maplethorpe. Uh, why ask me? I think it would be a problem and probably unconstitutional if law enforcement got involved in artistic affairs. This, this is America. Have to look at the temperature, uh, the humidity control. Oh, Lord. Oh, I never saw these in person before. Yeah. Oh. Mr. Berry, telephone line one. Mr. Berry, line one. You know, he had Alzheimer's when he did these. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Yellow. If you know what's good for you, you won't bring those filthy pictures to Cincinnati. Stop it, you guys. Stop it. Get off the bus. Get out of here. Get bold. Shut up. Your old man's a faggot. You don't even know what a faggot is. But you do. Your dad does. Shut the door. You hungry? Mom, why's the house for sale? I'm not selling the house. There's a for sale sign right out front. What? Oh, I can't believe this. Just in time for lunch. I'm Louis Serkin. Hello. This is my partner, Mark Mesbaugh. So what can we do for you today, Mr. Barry? Uh, Dennis. Coffee? Yes, thank you. Uh, Hutch Tucker, he's on the CAC Board of Directors. We know who he is. Hutch Tucker thought that we might see counsel about these phone calls we, we've been getting. Well, what, what kind of calls? Threats that 
Uh, the museum, like you, should burn in hell. Uh, thank you. Personal harassment. They put an ad in the paper that my house was up for sale, put a sign on my front yard, advertised a moving sale and um, open house on Sunday. So what do you want us to do? If people are making threats and invading your privacy, that's a matter for the sheriff. We notified the sheriff. And his spokesperson said that people exercising their right to free expression weren't violating any law, which <laughs> won't even exercise my own right to challenge the irony of that. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if you followed what happened at the Corcoran last June. Uh, we're First Amendment lawyers, Dennis. It's our lunch and dinner. Well, we have that show, Robert Maplethorpe's The Perfect Moment, on our schedule. I booked it in early 89. These people want to stop it. Why? They've been told the pictures are obscene. No, I mean, wh why did you book it? Oh, I had seen the Maplethorpe retrospective at the Whitney and thought it was stunning. And frankly, pretty mainstream. Mainstream? Guys pissing on guys, I, I don't see that every day. I mean, do you really, sincerely think that those pictures are mainstream? No, but yes. <laughs> From an art world perspective, yes. Now, we have had controversial work shown here at the CAC. Uh, not necessarily sexually themed work, but uh, Keith Haring, Basquiat, you know, work that challenges the orthodoxies of modern day critical and artistic thinking. Um, do you know the sheriff? <laughs> you know, he'd probably be the one to show up for your garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's funny. <laughs> it's very funny. Why am I not laughing? <laughs> so, uh, one of our contributors, major contributors, pulled his funding. James Johnson. You know that? H how do you know that? Self-appointed regulators, that's what I call them. Johnson is on the board of the directors of uh, People for Community Values. These people are very good organizers, very effective. Uh, they're the reason why if you want to buy a hustler, you have to go to Kentucky. I'm not Larry Flint. I'm the director of an art museum. That's right. And, and museums are, are protected under the Constitution. Thank you. But there's an election coming up, Dennis, and all the politicians around here are looking for something to denounce and to run against. So I would say that you have a lot more problems than people jamming your phones and selling your house. I wonder, has the sheriff seen these pictures yet? Hey, Marty. Sheriff, good to see you. Likewise. They're going to fix that damn highway. They've been trying to repair that damn thing ever since I can remember. <laughs> well, it's an honor to have you here. I'm glad you took the trouble to come out. Dennis Barry's been trying to reach me. He's got nothing to say to me I want to listen to. Well, so what is this problem you have you can't explain to me over the phone, Monty? A display of photography, Sheriff. I didn't want to put them in the mail. I thought if an inspector caught them, they tracked them back to me. Were you planning to show me the rest of the pictures? Or are you just going to put me on television with my big foot stuck in my mouth? I could try and organize it, Sheriff, if you tell me which pictures you are interested in seeing. Well, to you, I am probably just a small-time politician and an idiot. But I would never set a trap for you and make you look like a fool in front of your family and friends. Is that what you call journalistic integrity? Sir, I want to apologize. Oh, hell yes, now you do. Why would anyone believe anything that comes out of your mouth, young lady? Now, you're free to go. But you can tell the rest of your bunch out there that I am going after the museum, I'm going after Barry with everything I've got. Those pictures are obscene by any decent person's standards. I don't give a shit, okay? I'm the one getting my life threatened. You win either way. This whole thing is fucked. That's where I think we are. Let me tell you where we think we are, Dennis. Lee went on TV, he called the work criminally obscene. It's a publicity stunt. We want to call his bluff. Slap on a restraining order. He'll have to prove the work's obscene before he can lay a hand on it. What we're talking about is taking the sheriff to court. Oh, a showy legal stunt. Your law professors would be proud of you. You need a showy legal stunt. No. I'll pointing you in the publicity. Dennis, I saw I... you on TV. You're very high-minded. I want to talk to my board. It's making you uncomfortable. Hell yes, it's making me uncomfortable. What the fuck do you think? All right, fine. Fine, let's talk about comfort level and the right to free speech, all right? I'm a Jew. The ACLU, they come to me and they ask me to defend the right of the Ku Klux Klan to march in the streets of the ghetto. How do you think I feel? But that's your job. My job is running a museum. That involves working with the community, fundraising. The CAC gets contributions from people who voted for Sheriff Lees for the last five elections. It's the price we pay for a free society, Dennis. Have you ever heard of the slippery slope? I'm on it. 
My wife and my kids are on it. If, if you have a bullwhip going into a man's anus, it might be exquisitely uh, executed. The question is, uh, is it a necessary obligation to that artist to display that uh, piece of art? And I, I, th I think it is not. I think there is a role for the, for the public. I think the Supreme Court acknowledged this. Of course, what is completely hypocritical is to hear people who speak of themselves as conservatives, who think that the government is not competent to uh, protect the quality of the food we eat, who believe the government should have nothing to do with the economy, who believe that the government can't help elderly people get adequate health care. Somehow those are beyond the competences of government. But telling you what pictures you can look at, what books you can read, what movies you can see, this government, which is incompetent to help people with the health care, suddenly becomes uh, all competent when it comes to making what are, in fact, the most difficult intellectual, aesthetic, and moral judgments that individuals ought to make. Dennis, they're on their way out. You want to see something? These are our company's credit cards. Hundreds of them. They're cutting them up and canceling our accounts. Well, maybe you should have created a better grade of merchandise, Hutch. My people are all over me. I'm on the board. Why did I let this thing get out of hand? That joke wasn't funny. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to have called you on such short notice. Thank you for coming. Please, won't you all come in? Thank you. There's just a little heads up. Um, I may have underestimated uh, the reaction that some people have to these pictures, and uh, we don't want a replay of what happened at the Corcoran. Uh, so. What happened at the Corcoran? Well, they canceled the show, and there was... They were pilloried by the art world, thrashed by the media, and the museum director lost her job. I guess Dennis doesn't want a replay of that. Look, Sheriff Lease has not filed charges, and it's an election year. I think he's just trying to spook us. OK, so these are some of the images that they're mainly concerned about. Uh, what Robert Mapplethorpe referred to as the X, Y, and Z portfolios. You'll see, you know, these uh, S and M pictures here. Can't we just leave those out? Wouldn't that solve the problem? No, that would violate our contract with the Phil Philadelphia ICA, and I, I wouldn't do it anyway. You don't alter another curator show. See, what Maplethorpe created here was uh, uh, oftentimes multiple images, diptychs or triptychs. For example, if we were to take a uh, man in polyester suit, yes? Uh, on its own, it obviously has a certain uh, impact. Uh, but let's say that we take it with, uh, with calla lily, yes? And you put them together. Now, all of a sudden, there's a kind of harmony between the two pictures. They resonate one to the other. There's a whole that is greater than the sum of its rather uh, <laughs> substantial parts, if you will. So what are you asking us to do, Dennis? Well, the lawyers want us to sue Sheriff Lease. Uh, that way, he is compelled to prove that these are pornographic pictures by a legal standard. And he won't be able to do that, of course. We should then have our legal problems behind us, and we can proceed with the show. Mr. Ten and a Half. Christ. I don't want to sue the sheriff. I don't think this board wants to rush into anything. Dennis, this is your show. Why don't you just see if you can come up with a little agreement with Monty Lobb? He'll talk to the sheriff. God knows he. Paid enough for him. Yes. <laughs> Good day, sir. I'm with the People for Community Values. I wonder if you'd be interested in signing our petition against the Contemporary Arts Center to stop them displaying obscene, sexually provocative photographs of young children with their genitals exposed and explicit homosexual and bestial sex practices. It urges the sheriff to enforce Mr. the laws against obscenity. Mr. Already on. Hi. Excuse me. Uh, I wonder if I might have a word with you. You have nothing. You could possibly say to me. Well, yes, I do actually. I, no, I, you have nothing you could possibly no, say to me. I, I, you are a stench on the nostril of God. Excuse me. I, I know this how is, you feel about this. this. I understand your. I understand. This is unacceptable. I, no, get away. Look, I'm a family man. Get away. I'm, you're a family. I suggest you turn on your heels and march if you're a family man. Then call the police. Okay. Call the police. Okay. This is not. Look, all I want to do. All I want to do is talk with you. I want a record you. of this. Excuse me. They're suing me. Maybe it, it does meet the. The, what is it called? The uh, genital commotion test, as Dr. Mezabov or Mr. Mezabov, whatever his name is, what, you know, he called it that. But uh, 
Is it offensive? Well, I think most of us seem to think it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's got to have all three ingredients. And they are, um, okay, period interest, to be patently offensive and lacking in artistic, political, literary, and all those values. Sort of values. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. does everybody understand the analogy? Yeah. I mean, if, if you have flour and eggs but no apples, so you have two things, but the third one is missing, then it's not an apple pie. And it's not obscene. You know, Sirkin also said if if we didn't like a pass that Joe Montana threw against us in the Super Bowl, he wouldn't be a bad quarterback. Now, what's that got to do with this case? And then we lose the case. So now what? The judge throws it out. Where Dennis, are we? Dennis, this, this is not a problem. No, it's a problem for me. I just lost. No, no. Let us pray for Dennis Barry. Let us pray for his family. I don't want to make his wife. Mr. Sirkin. Mr. Sirkin. Mr. Sergeant, why did the judge throw out your lawsuit challenging Sheriff Lee to prove the maple syrup photos are obscene? Beats the hell out of me. That's the judge. What's the county going to do now, Sheriff? The show opening in three days? The city of Cincinnati, Ohio. Let us pray Mr. for the United are you disappointed? States of America. This is art this year. What's next year's art going to be? Sex with animals? I'm elected president. It won't be simply Mr. Fronemayer who goes. I will go down to that endowment. I will shut it down, padlock it, and fumigate the place. Well, it happens because the process is such that, that some art is, is funded before it exists, and some art is, is funded, and, and people get a hold of it and say, we don't like this, and because we don't like it, it must be everything that you do, and therefore we don't like you. Believe me, it's an extraordinary feeling to see people walking down the streets of a foreign city holding up placards of your face with your eyes poked out you know, and, and demanding your death. It was like taking the, the attitudes of the Inquisition and giving them you know, to the internet. I'm here at the Contemporary Arts Center with the museum's director. Mr. Berry, how have you responded to some of Mr. Lobb's allegations? Well, I've tried to contact the uh, People for Community Values, and unfortunately they haven't responded, but I do very much want to talk to them because I'm all oh, for community values. Oh, Dad's on TV! I mean, here. My children are growing up here, and that's something I want to, to do for them, for my children, to bring them in, and bring all of Cincinnati, in fact, into the global culture, to bring all of our children into a world, uh, into a life of the arts, uh, theater, music, dance, to, to make them citizens of the world, you know, into the global culture. That's hey, Dennis, from the we know where your kids go to school. The world. Yes. Well, now we know what you look like. In their lives. You look like you suck uh, dick. It is important, and I should say this to my fellow members of the Cincinnati, Cincinnati community, which is that, yes, it is. Hey. Hello. You doing up? Must be. Uh, yes, I am smoking. Mm. Your tie was a little crooked, but otherwise you look great. Oh, you watched. Mm -hmm. The boys see it? Yeah, they mm -hmm. saw it. Coincidentally, they have our new number. It's unlisted. I told a phone company, unlisted. Okay, well, they got it. <sighs> I'm sorry, Di. No. I'm sorry. Now you need to listen to the messages, too. Oh, no, 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 I erased them all. But Ian and Kevin heard one. It was a doozy. <clears throat> I didn't cause this, Diane. And if you're suggesting... No, 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 I'm not suggesting. I'm just saying you handled it very well and you came off great on television. I'm just not sure how to handle my end of it. sitting at another table. Don't you agree? Excuse me, Mr. Barry? Excuse us. You know, what I find unpleasant 
is when money is used in this town to terrorize anyone who doesn't think the way he thinks. In fact, I'd like to ask Mr. Johnson, why was my lawsuit thrown out of court? That's what I like in a young man. Piss and vinegar. Keep it up. Be careful. He could afford to sue us for libel about a million times over. I well, we may not have a place at the table, but we always have room on the dance floor. Thank you. Can't get over Hutch Tucker snubbing us like that. Yeah. Snubbed again. Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> well, you know what? He's probably just afraid of losing his job. Yeah, well, true, aren't you? Well, Johnson does get a lot of bang for his buck in this town. Are you worried? Well, I see you getting stronger and more full of life than I've seen in a long time. It scares me a little. What scares you? Mm. Is this scary? Is <laughs> this scary? I love this house and the life we lived here. Did you hear what I said, past tense? I was kind of scared it'll all go away. Hey. We can move somewhere else. I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want to go anywhere better. This is our home. You don't care so much, do you? You could just fold up your tent and move on. Knowing that you're going to be harassed is uh, uh, unfortunately going to be a deterrent. The whole process of having people say bad things about you, having your kids come home from school saying, oh, they said you were this, that, and the other, uh, that's pretty, pretty bad. It's what we call the chilling effect. What we need, Kevin, to understand, Mr. and Mrs. Barry, is that the fact that a person is of German extraction doesn't make it all right to call him a Nazi. Well, as, as I understand it, the other kid actually started it. No. He did. Yeah. So what, what, what did he say, this other guy? What did he say? Do we know? Did, did, he, did he say something to you, honey? He said you love faggots and they're going to burn in hell. Eric is on probation, just like Kevin. In our view, one insult is as serious as the other. So I'm going to have to ask you to sign off on a probationary report. Right. what an inspiration you are. Oh. I'm using you in class for a civics lesson. Oh, J Jane Sutter. Hi. Third grade, hi. Hi, thanks. It's nice to know that somebody thinks we're doing the right thing. You know, uh, if you're uh, forming an action committee or something, <laughs> anything, call me. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks. Who was that? Oh, but, uh, just a teacher. Okay. Ian, I hope you get to play, sweetheart. You behave yourself. And you are still in the doghouse, my man. Hi, John. Hi, Alice. Can we squeeze in over here, maybe? Hey, Johnny. I'll talk to Alice. you in a minute. Can we squeeze in here somewhere? Let's go. Come on. Sit right in there, sir. Hi, Diane. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Well, that was pretty rude. One Christmas card less. I'm not sending Christmas cards to anybody this year. Let it slide. I'm trying to get off the slide. Oh, let's just ignore all this, and maybe it'll just go away. You know, that's what you do. You just hold it all in. Everybody can hear you. I don't you. care. You just hold everything in. You know, I don't think if you ever did let go, you'd know how to stop. And I don't care if everybody hears me. And if anybody here has a problem with my husband, why don't you just say so to his face? Excuse me. You need to get the boys. Oh, I got him. Let's go. Okay. Thank you. Okay, folks, you can come on in. Oh, no flash photography, please. I was in, in town on other uh, business and had, uh, had read about it. All of Cincinnati was in turmoil uh, over the question whether there would be a lawsuit and, uh, and over the question of the, of the general propriety. The defenders of the museum said that uh, uh, it had caused a two or three hundred percent rise in the attendance of the museum. When, when, when I went there, there were a lot of people, but they weren't looking at the museum, they were just looking at uh, what in another context Russell Kirk called the fornicating bits. One couldn't, um, with any sense of confidence, have said that that exhibit reawakened in them their devotion to art, which had been neglected over the, the years. Empty museums uh, don't do anyone any good. Uh, there's a collaboration between uh, visitors, people in the building, and the works of art, and it's that relationship uh, between people and the objects that drew me into museum work. Does it turn you on, or does it gross you out? And that's something that we think the Constitution preserves to each individual to make a determination for himself or herself. I just find it disturbing. See, I don't have a problem with it at all. I, I can find it beautiful. Well, a lot of shots are beautiful, but they're also sexual. And for me, as soon as you combine naked children and sex, I'm sorry, but you've crossed the line. You know, to me, it's sick. We better call the office. Well, my experience of Robert Maplethorpe was very different because he was at my house for Christmas dinner, and he started photographing my daughter when she was just a tiny baby, and he was uh, on the side of Robert that I saw was kind of a homebody. In fact, he was very strict with me in terms of the upbringing of my daughter and uh, was kind of scandalized that I wasn't married and had a child. <laughs> so the Robert Mabel thought that I saw, you know, I mean, I knew, uh, you know, that he was hoping to create something with photography that was re as well respected as painting. He did like to cause a bit of a stir, so I think he'd probably be pretty amused by all the controversy. From a purely aesthetic point of view, the flower pictures are no different from the S&M pictures. They are no less shallow. They are no less copied. To me, <laughs> you know, I hardly consider this to be, um, you know, explosive. 
You know, now, the subject matter of the sex picture is obviously a wood shop. This is really, I, in my opinion, not the province of artists any longer. This is the province of high school sophomores. He was trying to reveal something about uh, what is normal. It was a provocation, but it was also a provocation that he knew would someday blow over. Uh, that it would someday be like the very famous, uh, is, it, is it Corbet? Um, the nude of the, the woman from the breast down to the thighs, and she's completely naked. It's a, it's, a, it's a pussy shot, but it's painted beautifully, and it's called, I believe, The Birth of the World. During its day, it was just as shocking as these fisting pictures, but now it is uh, art. I don't get it. Man had this incredible gift. Why show us this? What do you think? Is it art? There's a certain kind of beauty to it, but it's hard to look at. Do you think art is, is supposed to be just pretty? I mean, great art opens us up to new possibilities. Maybe not ones that we can accept, but at least we're thinking we're alive, right? Well, what's that, the no pain, no gain school of art? <laughs> well, Goya's pictures of the horrors of war hurt to look at. I mean, you've seen those pictures. And they have a... Hi. Excuse me. Hi. Excuse me. Sorry. Don't, don't talk to, to me. Continue. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Don't. How you doing? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, they're looking at the pictures. I mean, they are really looking at them. Good, good, good. So it's, happy. Oh, it's, good. it's great. Where's, where's your wife? Well, you know, she's not crazy about the pictures, and right now I'm not so sure she's crazy about me. Okay. Nice. We have a little bit of news for you. Mm -hmm. Lise has got a judge's order. Okay? They've convened a grand jury come down to the museum. They could be here right now. We assume they've been given instructions what to look for, what constitutes obscenity. All they have to do is determine whether, what might, what, what might be a crime. You know, I want you to be very careful what you say to anybody in here. Yeah, see, the grand jury, the rules are different, okay? The DA tells them what he thinks is obscene, and there's nobody there to tell them anything differently. Okay, I don't think these people know a hell of a lot about art or the law, okay? They're just regular people. Good afternoon. The grand jury has found seven of the pictures to be possibly obscene. The Contemporary Arts Center and Dennis Berry are charged with two counts each of pandering obscenity and the illegal use of a minor in pornography-related material. Sheriff, what do you say to the charges that your opposition to this show is driven by homophobia and racism? <clears throat> Are there any questions from any of you folks from out of state? It is my duty to uphold the law, and I take that duty very seriously. That's why I became a Marine, and that's why I became a prosecutor. And I was elected sheriff by people who know what I stand for and know what I'll do to uphold that law. And that is why Dennis Berry and the CAC are charged with two obscenity counts that carry with them stiff penalties and possibly even jail time. Dennis Barry, I have a search warrant and an indictment from the grand jury. I'll take that. I'm his lawyer. All right, folks, we're going to have to ask you to leave the building, please, and we'd like you to do it in a calm and orderly manner. Okay? Sieg Heil! There was a feeling I could get through looking at pornographic imagery that I thought had never been apparent in art. And I thought if I could somehow retain that feeling, you know, it was like maybe it was the forbidden because I was young. No, I mean, I, it was I mean, sort of too selfish to really, it was about me wanting to see things. And it wasn't, you know, certainly me first and secondary to that was the audience. But uh, I was always amazed that it shocked. I mean, it just, because once I had a photograph and I had taken it, it didn't, it wasn't shocking to me anymore. How did this happen to me? I never wanted to be a martyr for a cause. I was kind of a, naive or primitive in, in the sense that I just got a Polaroid camera and I started taking pictures. 
and you really think people needed to see them? Sex it is, for me, probably the most important thing in life. To have somebody to fight against is real important, too, and I think, you know, I think one can learn through that. So How are you talking think, about? You know, me? having this rigid sort of academic yeah. approach and being somebody that These people were fighting against and having a, you know, a viewpoint for sure themselves. You know, I was a, a they're not complex. Boy. They're not I went to church. lapsed Catholics like you. They're not plagued with moments of self-doubt like me. No. True believers. They don't want to listen. They never stop. Obsessed, unrelenting. This is all I do. Never sleep. I have a life. I had a life. Like Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart said about obscenity, I know it when I see it. Uh, he was a Cincinnati native. There's no doubt about it. This is a case of obscenity, plain and simple. And that's how we're going to prosecute it. What do you call it when you, when you paint a man urinating into the mouth of another man? In 1973, when it adopted the current obscenity exception, the court expressly said there is no scientific evidence of any harm from any exposure to any of this material. Is Dassault a matter of taste? Uh, 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 is the, is uh, uh, Auschwitz a matter of taste? The answer, in my judgment, is that some things are offensive. If a community ha cannot protect itself against exposures of that kind, then for all intents and purposes, it can't protect itself against anything. Until this happened, I never considered myself a particularly political person. And once I saw it, you know, the whole mechanism, I realized that this is how, this is how we got our freedom and this is how we'd lose it. It doesn't erode overnight. It's a very gradual chipping away of our rights of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And this is what happened in Germany. Hi, oh. Dennis. Hi. Hey, you look tired. Well, I've been watching. You really dug yourself into a hole. You need some help. You're not getting it. I'm sorry. Do I know you? You mind? <sighs> a little chill tonight. <laughs> we we're all real sorry to see that happen, you know? It was like watching somebody on a tightrope gradually losing their balance and upending right into the soup. Oh, which soup is that? Judge Albanese has a reputation as a tough old lion conservative. Yeah, I, I can't remember where we met. I'm sorry. I, I, Gosh, I, I thought your lawyers would have told you. Judge Albanese will be handling your case. He and Sheriff Lease went to school together. They jogged together. Sheriff oh, Lease co-chaired his election campaign. But we can help. Help with what? What? You would bribe a judge? Who are no, you? I nothing don't... like that. We don't have to. Oh. Well, you could cancel the show. Well, I... Look, I don't even know who you are. We would make it worth your while. You'd bribe me. I work for someone who was impressed with you. Now he feels he must have misjudged your character. Nonetheless, he's willing to do what he can to put this whole mess behind us. Never too late to make amends. I'll stay in touch. Hey, Ian. Hey. Have a good evening. Who was that? I don't know, Ian. Didn't give his name. I, I swear, I think he was going to offer me a bribe, but he acted like he was giving me a shot at salvation. Face it, some people think you're a sinner. That's very strange. Yeah. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you in person is that we just got assigned a judge. Ah. F. David Albanese. Dave Albanese is a friend of Simon Lee's. They were classmates at law school. They go jogging together at the Cincinnati Athletic Club. Lease gave Albanese his first job as a prosecutor. Lease co-chaired Albanese's first election campaign, and he did a television endorsement for his latest one.
May I show you around, sir? I'd just like to look around on my own. No offense. Is this the exhibition as it was first presented? Yes, except for the video. Please. It is the ethos of New York that Maple Phillips' world seems most to embody. In his portraits, we see the link between New York squalor and New York glamour, between its upper intelligentsia and its lower bohemia. We see the collaboration between Manhattan's high fashion mainstream and its low druggy ACDC underworld. This is a world of men depicted as either aroused or arousing. He titillates the art world with pornography. He knows where the money is, and he knows how to get it. Background. I don't want to see so much of your face. Hold it. There. I think that Maplethorpe has raised all of our complex feelings about sex, about violence, and about race. Those are three enormous subjects. And if he has explored them, if he's created so much... You know, debate, just because they're a museum, you know, they're saying... They're, they're not subject to the same laws that we are. That's what they're saying. What if my church wanted to put up these kinds of pictures? Or how about this? What if my church wanted to do an art show with pictures of aborted fetuses? But that's, that's not the same not thing. Not I mean, come on, on folks. That's not what this case is about. Well, then what is it about, smart guy? If it's art, it's not obscene. If it's obscene, it's not art. It's, that's simple. just, yeah, it's the way it is. It's plain and simple. I don't know why the law always has to be put in such flowery language when they're trying to get across something that's black and white. But... Right, and now it was up the prosecution. It was their job to prove that it was obscene, and we have to decide, did they do that? Now, did they do that? Uh, what about the one expert? Which one? I uh, said that art doesn't have to be pretty. He's not from Cincinnati. What does he know oh, about on. our First community values? I want you to think he's not from Cincinnati. Come on, I say we're more open-minded than that. I guess if he has something to say that makes us understand better what art is, then... <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Community values. That in itself is a kind of wistful, nostalgic phrase. There are no community standards anymore. There used to be. But when there were, you didn't have this kind of thing. In other words, in a, uh, there certainly was a time in Cincinnati where no one would have thought of displaying these pictures. It would never have happened because there were community standards. Also held by the people who ran the museums, by the way. So that's what community standard means. That's the entire community. But there are no communities anymore. There are special interest groups. All rise. I should like to read a quote. Obscenity emphasizes the base animality of our nature reduces the spirituality of humanity to mere bodily functions and debases civilization by transforming the private into the public. As to the indictments or the uh, motions to have a hearing on the indictments proffered by the defense, those motions will be denied. On the motion to have a hearing on selective prosecution, that motion is denied. And in regard to the motion to suppress, that motion is also denied. As to the issue whether the CAC is an art museum... Excuse me, Your Honor, there's no such motion. The motion refers to an Ohio law which allows even obscene photographs to be displayed by a museum for bona fide educational or cultural purposes. I looked up museum in Webster's Dictionary. The definition suggests that the contemporary art center isn't a museum, it is an art gallery. We shall set a trial date and a date for the final evidentiary hearing on the state's motion in limine. Now, folks, I don't know much about art, so you'll all have to be patient with me while I do my learning. That's the law. Well, it's his idea of the law, but he just gave us about 13 judicial errors that we can take straight to the appeals court. Fantastic. That's great. I'm dying and you're building a great career. Dennis. No, oh, goddammit, I'm sick of his attitude. Dennis, it's just his way. All right, Mark, I'm sorry. I just, I don't even know why I got involved in all this in the first Dennis, place or how. Let's go. Before you say something, you'll regret. Mark, I'm sorry. Come on. 
It's got the cork in a little bit too tight. Mm -hmm. Ms. Dalrymple, I'm going to show you what will be marked as defendant's exhibit number three and ask you to identify that document. It's a photograph of my son, Jesse McBride, taken in 1976 by Robert Maplethorpe. When the police asked uh, Barry, well, he didn't have the, the, the thingy, the, uh, the, the form uh, on file, the consent form. Are you talking about the kids? Yeah, so how the hell do we know he got their consent? Yeah, oh, well, but you oh. heard the depositions, right? The, like, they liked them, though, those mothers. That, they said that, it was okay with them. They, that, they let it happen. That one woman, she wasn't even married to the, to the boy's father. He, he lives in Hollywood, and she lives in New York. No, in that doesn't make any sense. I've been separated from my father, yeah. and left my That's mother five I, since I was five, and I'm not a deviant. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, those pictures look pretty innocent to me. I don't feel today that I was exploited, and I didn't feel then that I was being exploited. And uh, you know, it's the same thing as as if a friend of the family's had come over and taken a picture, a snapshot of me when I was naked in the apartment. I mean, it's, it's, it, that's, what, that's what happened. And it, it so happens that it, that it was displayed as a piece of art. It's not a political issue. And I, it's not child pornography, in my opinion. We are ready to rule on the exhibits A through G. Your Honor, uh, five of those photographs are from the X portfolio. Now, the exhibit was specifically designed so that the men's sexual organs portrayed in those pictures would be compared to the sexual organs of the flowers from the Y portfolio. Now, I think it would be unfair to the whole portfolio to separate them out. And it would be unfair to the flowers to put them back in. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Barry. I didn't see where a little levity would do us all any harm. Your Honor, I think our client would like to proceed with the ruling. A photograph stands on its own. That's true of a photograph hung on a wall. It's also true of a photograph if you take it home and put it in your living room or your bathroom or your dining room. Therefore, each of these seven photographs is to be taken as a whole. And let me point out that it's not the seven as a whole, but any one of the seven. If photograph A is obscene, and B, C, D, and E are not, that is all that is necessary for a verdict of guilty. What now? trial. Jury selection begins in three weeks. Sheriff, I didn't know you were a member. You know, I resent like hell drubbing Dave Albany's taken in the press. I mean, some of the things those defense counselors are saying about him, hell, I'd cite him for contempt. Hey, you want to hold this? You know, this, this maple court business is a black and white situation. You take a black news vendor, gets arrested for selling Hustler on the street, uh, an educated white museum director <clears throat> is allowed to plaster the vilest, most degrading acts the world has ever seen all over the museum walls and three cheers for art. Why? Ah! Well, not in my community. In my community, the law doesn't discriminate. Mrs. Barry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm from the court. I was expecting you and your husband home a lot earlier. Well, Dennis didn't tell me anybody was coming. Well, mind if I come in and wait? No, if you prefer, I'll wait outside. You must be tired. No, no, it, it, it's all right. Actually, I kind of wanted to talk to you. See what you think about our deal. What deal? I thought your husband would have told you about our little chat. No, please, uh, come on in. No, he didn't tell me anything. Would you like some coffee? I didn't get your name. What a lovely home. Oh, well, thank you. Mm. Oh, there's Ian. Yes. This is Kevin. Yes. <laughs> a fine family. You know, you're the first person since this whole thing started to even mention my family. Well, family's everything. That's what we believe. And. Well, sometimes, you know, it, it just takes a woman, a, a wife and a mother, to recognize what's at stake. Uh, maybe you could persuade your husband to consider our proposal. 
Well, as I told you before, I don't know anything about it, and my husband didn't ask for my opinion. So maybe you should just get to the point. Well, maybe he didn't say anything because we didn't actually get down to talking specifics. Mm -hmm. um, you put Ian down for the Waldorf Academy. Good school. It's tough to get into. And we have reports that some parents have complained. Well, I'm not complained exactly. Voice concerns about your son's going to school with their children. Did you know that? But the school, they've never said anything about any complaints. They will. You know, this is like a nightmare. I keep hoping it's gonna end and it'll all go away. It can. Well, for God's sake, would you please tell me, you know, Dennis, I don't, he, if he's not gonna listen, I have to do something. I have to consider my children. I got something I wanna show you and something I wanna say. What is this? Tell me you're just here selling vacuum cleaners. <laughs> no, I was just talking with Mrs. Barry, oh, excuse me, Ms. Barry, about the waiting list at Waldorf and the expenses. It's a pretty pricey academy. Then you got Kevin coming along, and there's the $90,000 second mortgage. Ms. Barry knows about the second mortgage, doesn't she? Get out of my house. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Just this. The figure on it at the moment reads $100,000. The exhibition has already come and gone. We're into the trial. What could I possibly do now that would be worth $100,000 to anybody? Just don't take the stand to testify for the defense. I am the defense. And that's the beauty of it. For you, it's win-win. Because the overwhelming odds are that this jury is going to convict you, Dennis. Well, maybe you can sway them with your testimony if you're very, very sincere and persuasive, but well, what if they just don't like you? And they find you arrogant, or they, they think you're playing God, or worse, they think you're the devil. So, let's look past the verdict. You're convicted. Now Judge Albanese gets to use his judgment. If he wants, he can just find you the $2,000, no jail time. I can pay that with my 30 pieces of silver. Money's fungible, Mr. Barry. It's one of the things my employer taught me. You talk about an employer, but who do you work for? Look, um, here's my card. You talk it over. Think about it. Mr. Prouty, may we have your opening statement, please? The state will show that uh, on or about April 7th, 1990, the defendants, Mr. Dennis Barry and the Contemporary Art Center, with the knowledge of the character of the material involved, to publicly display or exhibit the following. A photograph of a minor male child under the age of 18 with a lewd or graphic focus on the genitals. Photograph of a minor female child under the age of 18 with a graphic focus on the genitals. A photograph depicting the forearm and hand of one person inserted into the anus of another. A photograph of a finger being inserted into a piece. A photograph of a man with a whip inserted into his anus. All of which are obscene, as defined by state law, and also the standard of obscenity as set down by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Sheriff, please, can you tell us how the first day went? No, no comment. No. 
Disgusting mess. I've never seen anything like it, Your Honor. The national press, huh? <laughs> well, the prosecution puts on its case tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that, Your Honor. You and me both, Michael. You and me both. <laughs> no, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Okay. I'll see you there. Thank you. John Walsh. He's agreed to testify as an expert witness. You know what he said, though? said that <clears throat> some people in the art world wish that this were about a more important artist. Dad, Dad! What is wrong with you? Who cares about the damn art world? You, uh, are you out of your mind? Here, let me help you this, Diane. I was up all night. I was thinking. I couldn't stop thinking. I would, this is just insanity. And if the jury, they're going to send you to jail. I'm trying not to think about that. Well, you need to think about it. And how is this going to affect Ian and Kevin when you're in jail for a whole year? And what am I supposed to do? Look, Walsh said they may raise a, a fund or something. I'm not, I'm not talking about money. Well, maybe Sirkin will go easy, you know? I mean, this is a First Amendment lawyer's dream case, okay? He should do it for nothing. I'm talking about us. Diane, we are going to be okay. How the hell are we going to be okay? There was a moment. When I let myself believe that everything was going to be okay. Yeah. You know, but all you think about is yourself and the art. And you know I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the art. And your friend Maplethorpe, he's a self-absorbed, self-promoting, pretentious, disgusting, sex-ridden. All right. And he said himself that he wouldn't even do those filthy photos again. And I can't believe that you're letting him bring us down the drain. All right, all right. Damn it, all right! What am I supposed to do? I can't back down now. You can sneer at it, but the art world is the only world I know. It's the only world that you give a shit about! That's right, it's my life, it's my whole life! Well, do I fit in here? Do our kids fit in here? I hate, I hate this. I do too. I just hate it. But what am I, what am I supposed to do? If I quit now and I don't fight this through, win or lose, I'm gonna be a pariah. And then what do I do? Do I open a, a roadside museum, sell with weird rocks and jackalopes and rubber rattlesnakes? I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know. Dennis Barry, unchain that poor man, free him from his captor, and return his dignity. We, in this room, want to take the cylinders, fists, and whips out of the rectums and heal the wounds of the abused. We can stop the man from urinating on his brother and give them both back their humanity. We want to take the pain and the humiliation and the sickness out of sex and restore it to what God meant it to be, a celebration in private of the sacred relationship between man and woman. If this is art this year, what's next year's art gonna be? Sex with dead people? All right, 
but you'll be good. We'll see you later. Okay. Well, we'll get through this, whatever happens. Now you know how those presidential wives feel, smiling through while their feet are killing them. Don't even try to make me feel better. I'm doing this for me and for the kids, not you. Set your name, please. My name is Don Ruberg. I'm a vice officer. On April 7th, I served a warrant on Dennis Barry in the Contemporary Arts Center for displaying possibly obscene photographs. Directing your attention to State's Exhibit Number One, is it fair to say that's one of the pictures displayed on April 7th? Yes, sir, it was. What is that a picture of? It's a boy, a minor with his genitals exposed. And in your opinion, is that child under the age of 18? Yes, sir. And next, the People's Exhibit number two. Uh, it's a photograph of one man uh, urinating into the mouth of another. And State's Exhibit uh, number five. Uh, shows a man, I, I believe it's the art, uh, it's uh, Mr. Maplethorpe. Um, with a bullwhip inserted in his rectum. Mm -hmm. I'm directing your attention to uh, State's Exhibit Number Six. Uh, could you please describe that picture? That's a picture of a man shoving his forearm up the anus of another man. Have you ever heard of fisting? Yes. And what is the purpose of fisting? Objection, Your Honor. Unless this witness is qualified as an expert, I don't possibly see how we can answer the question. Overruled. You may answer. Fisting is a form of sex where one man rams his fist up the anus of another. For what purpose? For sexual gratification. No further questions, Your Honor. The state rests. The state rests? That's their whole case? Three cops? Thank you. <laughs> Move to dismiss. Approach the bench, Your Honor. Your Honor, it is the state's burden to make a prima facie case that those pictures are obscene. Now, in the third prong of Miller versus California, Taken as a whole, it must lack serious literary, artistic, scientific, or political values. Now, having three police officers state that they went to the community arts center and they saw the exhibit, I mean, please, that doesn't in any way, shape, or form satisfy that burden. Now, the state has not defined obscenity. They've not even bothered to make a presentation of a, of a definition of community values. They've not shown lewd exhibition or graphic focus on the genitals of the children. So, what is their case? Why are they even bothering to bring this prosecution? Mr. Prouty for the state. And the materials are received into evidence, the materials in this case being the pictures. Uh, then the, uh, the court makes a determination. There's no need to show community standards because uh, the court is community standards. You done? The motion is denied. This court will not substitute its judgment for the juries in determining if these photographs are obscene. Right where you want him. He just made more judicial mistakes. More grounds for appeal when they nail me. You're damn right. Yeah, well, how long is that going to take? Uh, what, what is it going to cost? Look, I've come, no, I've come to a decision about something and I thought you ought to know. Well, go on. We're listening. I'm not what? taking the stand. What? No, I'm not taking the stand. I decided, uh, Diane and I decided. I'm, 
You've got expert witnesses. The jury needs it. to hear you. You're the one that really matters. How yeah. are they going to understand why you did well, what you did? Well, suppose they don't like me. Suppose they think I'm elitist or arrogant. They're not going to think that. They're going to think yeah. that you're brave. Oh, yeah. They're going to see someone who's, who who's, uh, uh, believes in something and who is, is willing to put themselves in the what line What do I for do, it? Louie, when they ask me if I think my kid should see those pictures? You say that you're just like any other parent, that you're concerned about some of the things that some kids are exposed to in this big, bad world. Hey, what? Let me ask you one thing. What makes you think that not taking the stand is going to keep you out of prison? If I'm convicted, Albanese doesn't have to send me to jail, does he? I mean, he could just find me and, and let it go at that. So if I don't take the stand, isn't he liable to be more lenient? That's bullshit. Who told you that? Look, look obviously Proudy doesn't think that he needs to call any expert witnesses. That's how strong he thinks his case is. So, guys, I'm just going to let my colleagues in the art world say what needs to be said, and I'm just going to hope to cut my losses. Diane, can you talk some sense into no. this? Louis, you can't. Let's go. Come on. If you don't fight for your rights, somebody will come and take them away. You know, I mean, it's very, it's very, it's very simple. Your rights are those things that you fight for. Um, and if you, if you don't believe them to be worth fighting for, you know, don't be surprised when somebody takes them away. Mr. Walsh, in your expert opinion, how would you characterize Robert Maplethorpe's exhibit, The Perfect Moment? The pictures are well chosen handsomely mounted and lucidly composed. It's important work that speaks about a part of our society. It's not always pleasant, but it has significance and serious artistic merit. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. Prouty? No questions at this time, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. You may step down. If you look at the picture here, Mr. Stein, the lines of the picture are at angles. Is that correct? His legs are spread apart, is that correct? Well, I think they're positioned that way to keep him from falling off the couch. <laughs> the lines of the legs are graphically move up towards the center of the child's body to where the penis is, is that correct? The horizontal lines? The black and white, the contrast, the white legs against a black background. Don't they focus towards the child's penis? Mr. Prouty, I don't have that reading on the directions of the lines. Okay. But is it possible somebody else could have that reading? Objection. The only person that seems to have that reading is Mr. Prouty. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Carden, would you explain to the court the term formalism? Maplethorpe was one of the most important photographers working in the 80s in a formalist mode, which means less to do with the subject matter and more to do with things like light, color, composition the arrangement of objects within a picture. Thank you, Ms. Carden. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Prouty, your witness. Mrs. Carden, um, with respect to, to this first picture here, what are the formulas values in that picture? Formal qualities, you mean? Yeah. I could talk about the way the figure is centered within the frame, the way the lighting is cast over the figure the outline of the figure itself. The diagonals, for example, which move across from lower left to upper right, and the opposing diagonal, which moves from the lower left off into meeting the diagonal at the very center of the picture. And that's the one with the forearm up the anus. <laughs> with respect to state's exhibit number three, what is the formal value of the picture where the man is urinating into the mouth of another individual? It's part of a triptych, three pictures mounted together. It was shown directly above a flower picture that has the stems moving forward in the same way the shadow lines and the light come here. States exhibit number eight, where the finger is inserted into the penis. Robert thought the hand gestures were particularly beautiful. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's fair to say that these five pictures are sexual expressions. I would call them figure studies. So, in other words, you call them figure studies. I call them sexual acts. And anybody else could say what it is, too. Is that correct? Well, there is freedom of speech. So anybody can say anything they want. No more with this witness. Thank you. You may step down. Your Honor, may we approach? 
We'd like to introduce a rebuttal witness, Dr. Judith Wiseman. The defense strenuously objects to the introduction of a so-called rebuttal witness so late in the proceedings. She is not an art expert. She is not qualified to address the first, second, or third prong of the Miller test. I think the background of having been a songwriter for Captain Kangaroo right. does oh. not qualify her to come in here and testify as to artistic value. Right. Your Honor, doctor, doctor. Judith Reisman is a specialist in visual communication. Oh, she has oh, several you know, related postgraduate oh, yes. degrees. She's got a listing in who's who. Who's who in education, who's who in sexology. Your Honor, I respectfully PhDs. request. When one looks at the photograph, one sees what appears to be the buttocks of the male. And there's a highlight coming in here and lighting the head of the penis. It almost cameos the, the head of the penis. What is she doing, like porno for the deaf? <laughs> you want to leave this courtroom? Sorry, Your Honor. I apologize, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Crowdy. All right, Dr. Reisman. One of the defense's expert witnesses uh, defined art as the creation of perceptible form expressive of human feeling. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, I do. And do you believe, based on your expertise in content analysis, that the five pictures in question are expressive of human feeling? No, definitely not. When one looks at this photograph, one makes an assumption that this is the buttocks of a male, but that may not be the case. It could be, you know, the largest kind of lady, but you don't know because you don't see the rest of the body. There's, there's no face, you can't see the eyes. This is an anonymous image. There is nothing in this image that tells us anything about human emotion or feeling. I would challenge anyone to identify joy, anger, fear, surprise, shame, happiness, sadness, or distress in this particular photograph. That woman was a joke. Nobody can take her seriously. The jury did. You don't know that. What do you know? Do you know that they thought she was a joke and that all our expert witnesses were the real thing? Do you know that they can distinguish between her exotic-sounding credentials and a few elegant degrees from Harvard? All the more reason why you should testify. Look, Dennis, you're a Midwestern guy, an Ohioan. You won't come off like you just flew in from New York to enlighten the local turnip farmers. You're the one guy who can make this jury believe in you. I have to go to the bathroom. Excuse us. It's incredibly difficult. The, the defense of free speech, the defense of the First Amendment, if you like, begins at the point at which somebody says something you can't stand. It doesn't end at that point. If you can't defend the unpalatable, if you can't defend what is unpalatable to you personally, then you don't actually believe in free speech. No, you only believe in the free speech of those who agree with you. Oh my God, is that Ian? Hey! 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 Ian! Hey, get away from him! Hey, come here! Hey, hey, what the hell are you doing? What is wrong with you? What are you, a savage? What do you, you got somebody your own doing? size! Protecting our boy! I'm sorry. Sorry. That's... Go on, get out of here. Pick on somebody your own size, okay? Uh... Webster Bodine said his father said in old Christian days they would have tied you to oars and dragged you around for people to spit at and throw rocks at. And Carrie Merman's mom said before all this happened and you got famous, mommy was going to get divorced from you. Carrie Merman's mom. She doesn't know anything about my relationship with your father. Nobody does except me and your father. Okay. 
We talked about the trial in our class. Well, I hope with more enlightened attitudes. I said I was proud to have you as my dad. And even when you're in prison, I'll still be proud to be your son. Did you say that? Daddy, when do you get to tell your side? Go to sleep, you schnitzel gruber. <clears throat> Go to sleep. Good luck. Good luck. Your Honor, Louis, I'm here. Your Honor, the defense has one last witness. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God? Yes, I do. The Corcoran had canceled the show. Senator Helms and others had made the pictures the focal point of their campaign to defund the National Endowment. Why did you go ahead and bring the perfect moment to Cincinnati? I, my staff, my board of directors felt that we were doing our job, which is to bring to the people of the city uh, the best and the most interesting of contemporary art. The pictures of the two children, Jesse and, and Rosie, do you feel these pictures are morally innocent? Absolutely, yes. As a father, as a museum professional, I am totally confident of that. Why didn't you just remove the other pictures that some people found objectionable? To do so would be an affront to the artist, like taking chapters out of a book because some people found them offensive. You know, Renaissance religious art, for example, is full of images of naked cherubs. Technically, I suppose, children with their sex organs exposed. Do we cover them up because some people find them offensive? I, I think that would be absurd. To leave out essential elements of this exhibit would have deprived people of their right to see it as it was meant to be seen. Thank you very much, Mr. Berry. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Prouty. All right. Um, is it fair to say, Mr. Berry, that you knew that the exhibition Robert Maplethorpe, the perfect moment, was controversial back in May of 1989? By then I did, yes. Almost a year before the time it was scheduled to arrive in Cincinnati? Yes. So you had plenty of time to cancel that show and find a different show to exhibit. Is that fair to say? It was never a consideration. Because you knew it would attract attention and create publicity? Well, by the time the Corcoran canceled their show, we were aware that there might be some public pressure here to do the same thing, yes. But you chose to ignore that pressure, even from local law enforcement. Is that correct? Yes. We just did what we thought was the right thing to do. Were you afraid how it would look in the art world if you were to back down? Were you? I was aware that the art community wanted me to take a stand, yes. And that you'd be a hero in that world, which is a world that's very important to you. Is that fair to say? It is my work and my life, yes. And your work is running a gallery which you would have us believe is all altruistic and no public display. And yet you, uh, you advertise and you sell tickets. And you pull people in like any other carnival or circus. Isn't it fair to say that you booked that exhibit as a cheap way to attract attention to yourself and bolster sagging attendance at your gallery? No, Mr. Party, that's not fair. Nothing about any of this has been fair. It's not fair that my children have been called names and had their eyes blackened at school because of something I chose to do in my professional life. It's not fair that my wife had to resign from the PTA because some mothers refused to sit in the same room with her. Or that she endured obscene, threatening and vicious phone calls in the middle of the night. Not fair at all. 
Your Honor, please. Just respond to the question. You know, Mr. Prouty, when they tell you that you can't show certain works of art in your museum one day, then the next day you have to ask them, well, what kind of works can I show? And then soon it's illegal to make certain works of art. And next they'll be banning books. Believe me, they have tried it before. And it will be impossible to fight if we are already on the slippery slope. You know, right now in Florida, the authorities are trying to censor this rap music, the, the two live crew album. Have, have you heard it, Mr. Prouty? Because there's one thing I can say to an absolute certainty. You would hate it. I don't even think it's music, and I, I won't let my boys bring it in the house. Objection, Your That is my prerogative. Mr. Barry, father. would you please stick to the point? But by God, He's I... He's answering. It was not fair. I don't want some bureaucrat, or with all due respect, or some prosecuting attorney to tell me what to do as a father. I will make that choice for myself. On this, I am a right-wing conservative. I don't want any moral review board telling me what I can read, see, listen to, watch. I will decide what my children learn. Not Sheriff Lease, not the sly and secret bullies who whisper their ugly threats into my telephone in the dark of night or bully my kids at school. This trial isn't about dirty pictures or me. This trial is about our freedom to choose for ourselves. And I will tell you, I am terrified of spending a year in jail, but I am more terrified by what's at stake in this case for all of us. That Dr. Ruth lady that talked for the prosecution. <laughs> in the shape of this penis. I, don't know. I still say there should be a law against it. Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, I suppose, but obviously he seemed to really put a lot of thought into what he was saying. He seemed to really believe in what he was saying, and I, I thought he was sincere, and I, I guess that counts for something. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Matthew 7, verse 13, 14. And there is no room at my gate for some of these pictures. I don't get it. I mean, the prosecution could have called in a, a sociologist or, or a psychologist. I mean, someone who, who could say, these are not art because... I mean, they could have called that Reverend Jerry... Uh, Kirk. Uh, yeah, or, 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 or someone from uh, People for Community Values, for Christ's sake. I mean, they're the ones who, who started this whole thing and they don't even bother to show up in court. Look, we're all aware of the law, right? And, and we understand Miller versus California. California. The definition of art versus the definition of obscenity. That's it. I don't know. I mean, 10 years ago, I moved my family to Cincinnati, and, and one of the reasons was because it's a clean city. Now my daughter wants a nose ring, for Christ's sake. Yeah, it's the fashion. <laughs> I don't want to make a decision that's going to erode wh whatever we've got left, you know?
Members of the jury, have you reached verdicts in these matters? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Would you please hand your verdicts to the bailiff? Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will hear your verdict read as the order of the court to be recorded. City of Cincinnati, State of Ohio versus Contemporary Art Center, case number 90CRB11699 A. We, the jury, in this case, being duly impaneled and sworn, do find the defendant not guilty yes. of the legal use of a minor. Sir, you'll have to leave the court. That gentleman will leave this room right now. Excuse me, sir. Sir, you'll have to leave right now. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I am going. Let's go. I will have order in this court. In violation of section 2907.32-A-2 of the Ohio Revised Code, we find the defendant not yes. 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 in this room. Yes. 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 Quiet in this room. Unpunchable. Unpunchable. Members of the jury, having discharged your duties, this court thanks you. You are free to leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Where's You're my welcome. little boys? Where are my boys? Hey! <laughs> Jury! Today was a victory for art museums and, and artists everywhere. But the real heroes of today were the eight people on the jury, so-called ordinary citizens, who made what had to be the most difficult decision to protect our most treasured and troubling amendment. Let's show some appreciation for them, wherever they are. Police says the reason we lost the trial was because of a liberal conspiracy by the city council to dump the case into the lap of an incompetent prosecutor. But I say, we didn't lose anything. Our victory was won long before that trial. Our victory is in our power to bring prosecutions. All across the country these days, people are much more careful about the kind of artwork they show in their museums and galleries. No one wants to come up against what Dennis Berg went through. We sent that message out there. In case you're interested, Dennis Berry left the Contemporary Arts Center in January of 1992. The only surprise was that he lasted that long. He and his wife are now divorced. The two defense attorneys, well, they're still practicing law here in Cincinnati. Right now, they're defending Larry Flint. Again. Prouty? That was his last case for the city prosecutor's office. Miss Rising is still an assistant prosecutor, though. She's doing great. Judge Albanese wasn't re-elected to the bench in the next election. 
He now works for Simon Lease, who's still Hamilton County Sheriff. Y'all follow what's been going on with the National Endowment for the Arts lately? Not a lot, I can tell you that. The First Amendment, all well and good. But someone's got to protect the good people of this country from filth and degradation. We'll never stop fighting this fight. Someone has to save the moral soul of America. The notion that you use the legal system as a club and uh, putting someone who is found innocent by the legal system through the terrible stress and storm and drong of being criminally prosecuted with this outcome in doubt, the notion that that's a legitimate thing is bizarre in every case. But when it comes from somebody who professes to be a kind of law and order uh, advocate of, of a stable society, it's perverse. And I do think it's important to say that in the particular case of the Satanic Verses, we won. You know, that, that's to say the, the people who were attacking us, and I say us because the attack included the books, publishers, and translators, and so on, were obliged to understand that they had gone too far and they had to back off, and so they did. Not before some very serious casualties, because the Japanese translator of the book was murdered. The Norwegian trans publisher of the book was shot three times in the back and um, happily survived, made a full recovery. The Italian translator of the book was knifed several times um, uh, and again, fortunately, survived. This attack was anything but theoretical. It was real. What makes a free society work is the extent to which people in it accept inhibitions which curb their appetites. And the curbing of those appetites makes society work where people live together, work together, uh, and uh, work in, in common uh, enterprises. That's, that's the whole basis of, of the reason for, for manners, for civility, for routine acts of kindness. So I, I'm, I'm all in favor of generating those pressures, not of dissipating them. I think it's very heartening that the jury found that way in Cincinnati, but I don't think you can really count on it anymore. You know, I mean, I know that people, are, you're always supposed to say, I trust the system, I trust the people, you know, I trust, I don't trust the people. I've met the people. You know, I couldn't do them today. I wouldn't want to do them today. There was a certain moment, and I, I was in a perfect situation in that most of the people in those photographs were friends of mine, and they trusted me. And I felt like almost an obligation to record those things. I have a certain vision, and it's sort of an obligation for me to do it, you know, to make pic images that nobody's seen before and do it in a way that's, you know, aesthetic. Everybody's got, you know, wicked uncles and deranged great aunts and nymphomaniac daughters and real life is not normal. The idea that we all live in these kind of neat worlds where nothing ever ruffles the surface and everything is kind of nice and then along come these horrible artists and show us horrible things and we should shut them up, you know. It's a fiction. The world isn't like that, you know. Real life is tempestuous and turbulent and full of aberrations and difficulty and um, disturbance. This is everybody's commonplace experience of their own private lives. And if they say it isn't, they're lying. So it seems remarkable then what we know in our private lives, what happens behind that front door when we've shut it is something we try and pretend doesn't happen. And when artists try and reflect those things, we blame them for doing so.